welcome to this week's edition of The Gun Doctor. Just before 8 a.m. on Sunday, December 7, 1941, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, and the rest, as they say, is history. Part of that history were the rifles used, as noted this week in an article written in Guns.com. The most common rifle used was the M1903 Springfield Bolt Action 30 6 with an internal five-shot magazine. The Springfield was used by the Marines and held in the Navy's small arm lockers and armories. Even lighthouse keepers and NPS park rangers in the months before the attack were issued M1903s on loan from the Army and 45s for use in patrol work along the coastline. In 1937, a new rifle was adopted by the Army to replace the M1903, and it too was chambered in 30 6 but loaded from an 8-shot in block clip. During the attack at Pearl Harbor, and many soldiers relied on the old M1903s, but those who were issued the new M1 Garand when the attack occurred encountered another problem. The M1903 used a five-round stripper clip to charge the bolt-action rifle that didn't fit the new M1. The problem was that the 30 6 ammo was often pre-packed in bandoliers for the older rifle. When the attack occurred, the new M1s were handed out, and those soldiers could only fire one round at a time as the pre-packed bandoliers wouldn't work in the new M1. One soldier reported firing the 60-round bandolier in the new M1 one shot at a time. During the first wave, four enemy planes were shot down by Army guns, but most of those guns were BARs and machine guns. The surprise attack left many battleships helpless as they couldn't use their 4-inch guns, and instead they had to rely on topside weapons, Browning automatic rifles, and Thompson machine guns. Many of the rifles and firearms are still in existence today, but even more impressive are the stories told by those who served and have been named the greatest generation. But many of those stories are fading with those who served, as there are approximately 240,000 World War II vets left alive today out of the 16 million that served during World War II. My father was a Navy veteran of World War II, he left high school early along with 27 others who would not graduate with their class. While he saw little to no action on a Navy supply ship, after the war ended, they docked in Hawaii where there were piles of enemy gear and weapons. They were each allowed to take one item as a souvenir and he chose a Japanese rifle, which went missing for several years after he returned home, but was later found in a friend's basement many years later. Had it not been for the government certificate with his name on it taped to the rifle stock that allowed him to possess the rifle, it may have been lost for good, but now it remains in our family and will be passed down for generations to come as a reminder of the greatest generation in World War II. Another man I had the pleasure to know and work with had also served in World War II. He was a Marine assigned to the USS Phoenix at Pearl Harbor. The USS Phoenix was a light cruiser and was one of the few ships to escape unharmed from the attack at Pearl Harbor. Pops, as we call him, told the story of the attack. The ship's captain wasn't on board the Phoenix at the time of the attack, and the gangplank, which had nicely polished brass on the rails, was dropped into the harbor as they frantically tried to maneuver the ship out of the harbor. He recalled as a young 18-year-old Marine, not familiar with the ship he was assigned to, that he ran into the hold to retrieve ammo for the deck guns. He said he carried numerous boxes to the deck before he discovered he was delivering 30 caliber ammo to a 50 caliber machine gun. Eventually, the USS Phoenix made it out of the harbor and joined other ships to search for the enemy aircraft carriers, which they never did locate. If you know someone from the greatest generation who served during World War II, it is well worth your time to hear their stories and never too late to say thank you. This week, we at The Gun Doctor and everyone from Smoke and Gunworks want to remember all those of the greatest generation who served, and we say thank you, and to those who didn't make it home from that fateful day, we will not forget. For The Gun Doctor and Smoke and Gunworks, I'm Tim Bivins.